In the previous video, we learned that tasks finish late more often than they finish early. One of the primary reasons tasks finish late so often is something known as student syndrome. Student syndrome refers to waiting to start a task until the last possible moment that doesn't preclude an on-time finish. Did you ever start a term paper the night before it was due? Or was I the only one who did that? Student syndrome affects traditional projects because we often feel optimistic about estimates we gave earlier. Suppose my project manager asks me how long something will take. I think about it and decide I'm likely to finish in seven days. But I don't want to risk being late, so I tell my manager 10 days. The manager puts 10 days on the Gantt chart. The estimate I gave my boss was made up of my seven-day estimate of work plus three additional days of what is called a local buffer. A local buffer is padding added to an individual unit of work. Suppose that a month later, it's now time for me to work on that task. I look at it and think, 10 days? No way. That shouldn't take more than seven. And I let the first three days go by before I start. I use up that local buffer right at the start. Maybe I do other valuable work on the project. Maybe I catch up on some important reading. Or maybe I do something less valuable, but I let three days go by. And I'm not worried, because this thing really shouldn't take more than seven days. See the correlation of that term paper? Finally, on the fourth day, I start the work. But it doesn't take seven days. It takes, say, nine days. I've taken something that had sufficient time on the Gantt chart and let it come in late. Student syndrome is human nature, so it's not something we're going to want to fight. As we build up an Agile estimating and planning approach, we'll find that the short iterations of Agile help focus attention, reducing the impact of student syndrome. One way to think of it is that there are no big 20-page end-of-term papers on an Agile project. Instead, you have to turn in a one-page paper every iteration. Let's look at the third problem faced by traditional plans. Lateness gets passed down the schedule. Consider this very simple Gantt chart. We have four tasks. Task three is dependent on task two, which is itself dependent on task one. Task three is also dependent on task four. Notice that task three will start late if tasks one, two, or four are late. If anything goes wrong with any of those, task three starts late. Compare that to what it takes for task three to start early. Task three can start early only if the combination of tasks one and two is early, and task four is early, and the person who will work on task three is available. We are comparing the likelihood of a set of ORD conditions to the likelihood of a set of ANDED conditions. Given this, Task 3 is much more likely to start late than it is to start early. So what we see here is that lateness gets passed along a schedule, but being early does not. Having looked at some of the common reasons why traditional plans often go wrong, in the next video, we'll take a look at the six levels of planning that occur in Agile organizations. <laughs>